Sometimes in sports you play for the past as well as the present. For nearly 100 years, Maryland has played collegiate basketball and never reached the Final Four. Not even the great teams of John Lucas and Len Elmore. So this Maryland team of Lonnie Baxter, Juan Dixon, and Coach Williams play not just for themselves, but for all those Maryland greats who never accomplished their dreams. The great Hank Lucetti helped establish a proud basketball tradition at Stanford that culminated with a national title in 42. But for 59 seasons, Stanford has chased an elusive second title. Now this Stanford team, led by the mighty Casey, stands on the precipice of another Final Four appearance. They played not just for a chance to make history, but to honor their glorious past with a national title of their own. from the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim, the West Regional Final, where Stanford takes on Maryland for a trip to the Final Four. And a look at the bracket here in the West, Stanford advancing by defeating Cincinnati, Maryland advancing by defeating their crosstown rival, Georgetown. Afternoon, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. Stanford and Maryland, a classic matchup this afternoon. And when you look at the numbers, Dan, these two teams are very similar in makeup. Gus, they sure are, but you got to look beyond the numbers. Of course, thinking about numbers, Mark Twain once said, there are lies, damned lies, and statistics. And while these numbers certainly appear that these two teams are similar, they go at it in different ways. They do not play the same style, and this is a game that really is going to be an interesting contrast of styles. So Gary Williams, his team ready for this one. Well, it's, it's two contrasting styles. In other words, we like to get up and down. We like to run, and um, we've had some success against good teams by running this year. So hopefully we can play our game tomorrow and that's not easy to do against Stanford sometimes, but it'll be an interesting matchup between what's primarily a half-court team and a team that likes to go full court. And what is that Maryland full court style? Well, they really like to get it out on the break and run, and Steve Blake, he can be dangerous, in fact, to both teams in that running style, but they've got guys who can finish on the end of the break, and Stanford, well, coaches talk about the inside-outside game, and Stanford in the half court set does a nice job getting it inside. Now as the double team comes, it's great if you can have a guy who can see across the court and can get turned. The inside is cut off. So in this case, Jason Collins pitches it out to Casey Jacobson who reverses it to Ryan Mendez. Excellent movement in the half court. All right, so a sellout crowd in attendance, close to 20,000, ready to watch Stanford and Maryland play for a trip to Minneapolis. Next Sunday, get a special 90-minute 90 90 minute look at the life of one of basketball's most dazzling talents as Harry Connick Jr. narrates Pistol Pete, the life and times of Pete Maravich. Among those featured in the documentary are Mike Ditka, Julius Irving, Lefty Drizel and a rare interview with Pete's wife, Jackie Maravich. The Anaheim Pond and Maryland ready to take on Stanford. Let's join the third member of our team, Dwayne Ballin. Gus, you know there is a sense among both of these teams that they have something to prove for Stanford. Though the Cardinal have been number one seed in this tournament, there is a sense in the college basketball community that, frankly, they are not that good. Casey Jacobson talked to me about that yesterday, and I talked to him a moment ago, and he said, it's showtime. We have something to prove. As for Maryland, the Terrapins have never gotten to this point since 1975, and they feel there are people that don't think they can get beyond. So, with all due respect to Aretha, both teams looking for R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Gus. All right, Dwayne, very well said. So coming up, the starters and the opening tip, Stanford and Maryland, next. Esports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, Microsoft, Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, 
and by Fidelity Investments. Welcome back to Anaheim, Maryland, ready to take on Stanford for the third time. And the Terps lead the all-time series two games to none. The last game, 1998, with the Terps winning it 62-60 at the MCI Center in Washington. Gary Williams looking for his first Final Four. He's a former Maryland player back in 1968. And a look at the starters. Mouton, the transfer from Tulane, along with Terrence Morris. Baxter in the backcourt, Steve Blake and Juan Dixon. Mike Montgomery, the head coach of the Cardinal, looking for his second trip to the Final Four in his 15th season, replaced Dr. Tom Davis. And the starters for the Cardinal, it's Collins along with Mendez, the sharpshooter, and Jason Collins in the middle, the seven-footer, along with Casey Jacobson, the All-America, and Michael McDonald is the point guard. And the officials, John Clockerty, Gary Sitton, and Art McDonald. So er early on in this game, what should we pay attention to? Have to pay attention to how well Maryland defends the inside-outside game of Stanford, and you have to pay attention to how well Stanford is able to prevent Maryland from getting out on the break. The road to the Elite Eight for the Terps. 76-66 winners over Georgetown. And for Stanford, they beat UNC Greensboro, St. Joe's, and Cincinnati, a game in which they shot 62% from the field. That's a little different for Maryland. They're playing somebody that doesn't get involved with George. <laughs> Here's the toss in the tap, and it's controlled. Let's see, by the Terps. Terps will get it. And I know in College Park right about now, they are Fired up with R.J. Bentley's out there on Route 1. And the man defense by Stanford. Here's the matchup. Juan Dixon against Casey Jacobson. That ought to be a fascinating one all day long. Morris, 1 of 11, his last game. Hits his first shot, and that's a huge bucket. Not only is that a huge bucket, guys, that's his first three-point basket of this tournament. So Maryland takes the early lead. Mendez guarded by Dixon. Here's Jaron Collins looking inside. Jacobson squares and rips it. And that's a great job. Juan Dixon went down inside the double team, but Collins got the ball out quickly to Casey Jacobson. Baxter the other way. The jump hook is short. And the mighty Casey with the rebound. Good job by Jason Collins to keep Baxter just a step further away than he wanted to be. Mendez sets short, rebounded by Morris. Out the way. Morris again tees it up. And a rebound goes to Collins. You notice that they left Morris at the top of the key to double team against Baxter. It looks like Morris is going to have that shot pretty much throughout the afternoon. Jared Collins drops that fades on the baseline, tapped around, claimed by Blake. Turks want to run it. Blake almost traveled. He'll get it back and set up the offense. Maryland comes in this game 24 and 10. They finish 10 and 6 in the ACC. Mouton drives and fire. And Jacobson hauls it down. Jacobson doing a great job on the inside thus far. Stanford really is going to have to get after it to rebound with the Maryland team. And a whistle. Reach in foul called against the Terps. Gus Terrence Morris made that first three-point basket of the game, and he really has dropped off, but not only in the NCAA tournament, but toward the regular season, toward the end of the regular season as well. What a stark contrast between the tournament and the season. But Morris, since the end of January, only seven of 35 from beyond the three-point off. Inside, Collins, great catch, goes to the basket, can't get it to stay down. Moves on with the rebound. Third break out quickly. Blake, bounce pass, tip, out of bounds. Jacobson gets a hand on it, and it deflects off Juan Dixon. And Dixon's saying it never deflected off of his hand. Blake is a guy, Gus, who likes to try to make that pass, and sometimes it's just too tough a pass to make. You don't need to make the great play. You need to make the easy one. Now Jason Collins across the lane, and a foul. 
This will be against Terrence Morris. Picks up his first. Gus, what an interesting strategy we have here so far. Notice Juan Dixon does not step down in and try to get the ball. Collins with the one dribble, Morris fouls, and Maryland really wants to attack Collins when he dribbles it, and they didn't do it. And Jason Collins has a lot of Brad Gordy in this game, doesn't he? He really does. He catches the ball very well. He holds the ball up high. He is an excellent passer. And for a seven-foot guy, he puts the ball on the court very effectively. Here he is, guarded by Morris. Michael McDonald from downtown, short, and a rebound to Mouton, his second. Stanford doing a great job getting back on defense. Now Baxter across the lane, leans, and hits. He had to get by both of the Collins twins that time. Again, Jaron Collins, number 31 in white, who's matched up against Terrence Morris, number 44 in red. Watches Jaron Collins, drops away from Terrence Morris to try to go help out against Baxter. Up top, Mendez, and he is a gunner, folks. You can't give him open looks because he'll knock him down. This game tied at five, and a whistle, a holding foul inside against Jaron Collins. Lonnie Baxter, the guy on the inside for Maryland, sets the screen, and then they really look for Baxter once he sets the screen. Mendez reaches down inside, Jaron Collins reaches down inside, but Baxter is able to convert anyway. Lonnie coming off a 26-point, 14-rebound effort against Georgetown. Now Morris with the step on the baseline, leads in a little too strong. Here come the Cardinals. Collins dropping to the bucket, counted at one. And that is the second foul on Terrence Morris. We talked about Maryland's ability to get out and run, but Jaron Collins runs the court very effectively, and as a good big guy should do, runs right to the block, catches the ball, powers it to the basket, and Terrence Morris is going to have to leave the game. Replaced by Taj Holden, a sophomore from Red Bank, New Jersey. But when you look at these two twins, they are so sound fundamentally. They shoot free throws well, medium range jump shots well, they rebound, they don't jump on pump fakes, they do everything very well. They play in a very intelligent game of basketball. They don't beat themselves. Now, Taj Holden, who's come in the game for Terrence Morris, they really ought to nickname him Mighty Mouse because he really did save the day on Thursday when he came in and had 10 points. Baxter forcing his way inside the jump hook, and he gets the bounce. Gus, and that's a situation where Jason Collins is seven feet tall, but you are correct. He's not really a shot blocker, and Lonnie Baxter uses that 260-pound frame to get himself close and get it up over the top. Inside, here's Collins, puts it on the floor, taken away by Baxter in a reach-in foul against Jason Collins. And you rarely see him do that, try to gather himself with the power dribble. And his parents in the stands, Paul and Portia, and they have raised not only two great basketball players, but two very good young men. Boy, and they, now, one of the things is each of the Collins twins has picked up a foul so far. Remember that Stanford, they've got those two twins, but they get bought very small, very quickly if one of them has to go out of the game. Baxter going at Collins again. The jump hook is short. Jason with the rebound. Here's McDonald. Diagonal pass to Jacobson. Picked up quickly by Mouton. And that's an interesting matchup. Mouton, really good size. Back door, Jason Collins. Jason Collins, 15 points, eight rebounds against Cincinnati. He was four of seven from the floor. And a whistle up top. Taj Holden picks up the foul. So Jason Collins, great hands inside. Stanford up by three. Only two losses for the Cardinal this season to UCLA on February 1st and Arizona on March 8th. Gus, and interestingly enough, both of those losses were at home. Stanford won the games on the road, and don't forget, on December the 21st, Stanford came back from way down in the second half and beat Duke 84 to 83. They were down 15 at one point in the second half, came back to win the game. Cardinal up by three. Theo Johnson in the game. Jacobson leans in, rattles out. Baxter with a strong rebound. His first. And the early three-point shooting. 
Baxter, Blake, Holden, Dixon, and Mujan on the floor for the Terrapins. And now Teo Johnson's going to try to match up inside against Lonnie Baxter, and that will be very interesting to see if he can keep Baxter away from the goal. Dixon around the screen, the kick to Holden. Got it. And that is a three. Taj Holden, a big guy, just like Jason Collins, who can go behind that arc and hit the three with some consistency. At 10 points against Georgetown. Holden at 6 feet 10, probably a better matchup against Jason Collins than Terrence Morris. Holden, much bigger fella. Jacobs in around the corner, feeds Collins. He draws contact inside. Let's flash back, folks. Stanford's Casey Jacobson scored the game-winning basket against number one Duke earlier this season as Mike Montgomery and the Cardinal knocked off Coach K's Blue Devils 84-83. The Cardinal trailed by as many as 15 in the second half before coming back. And Coach Mike Montgomery, you know, he has a uh, chip on his shoulder. You know why? Because he feels that the West Coast teams don't get enough attention, and he's probably right. Of course, the West Coast teams, they play too late at night for people on the <laughs> East Coast. Old people can't stay up that late. All those New York riders, as Baxter picks up his first, but what a fine coach, Mike Montgomery. Uh, he does an excellent job, and that tip on his shoulder, Gus, uh, we don't mean that in any sort of a negative way. Mike Montgomery, a real competitor. Of course, coaches do anything they can to motivate their teams. Former rugby player, Collins with four points. Now Dixon from 20. It's pure. Juan Dixon ties the game up at 12, his first basket of the game. And if you saw any of our interviews with Casey Jacobson before the game, he talked about how it was very important that he prevent Juan Dixon from blowing up. And Dixon's certainly a guy who can blow up for a lot of points if you don't guard him. Now get an interactive tournament experience with fan polls, in-game features, and player matchups. It's all at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Game tied at 12. 13.50 to go here in the first half of play. Now Collins, cross court. McDonald loses it into the hands of Dixon. Boy, Baxter really wants the ball on the inside. And he's telling Blake he was open, and Blake didn't get him the ball. Now Blake, the high pick and roll, 14 to shoot. Holden inside, Dixon finds Baxter straight to the basket and a reach-in foul. And that's against Jason Collins, his second. Very, very difficult to defend Lonnie Baxter. In this particular case, Baxter's out by the free throw line, and they can surprise Collins. Baxter not noted for his ability to put it on the deck and go to the basket, but that is a big foul against Jason Collins. Collins takes his seat. Danny Miller into the game from deep. This is Blake. It's a three. And Maryland takes a 15-12 lead. Gus Maryland has only made only made six three-pointers in the whole tournament coming in. And a steal. Dixon straight to the cup and a finger roll. Juan Dixon, one of the best basketball thieves in college basketball. Gus, he's in the top 15 nationally in steals per game. You better be careful when he's out on the court. 7-0 run for the Terps. Al Jacobson looking to take over. Driving. And travel. Maryland, if they can get the steals, they can get easy baskets, get the game the up-tempo way they want. Juan Dixon just coming out of nowhere. You have to be aware that he's going to go after the ball, and you've got to step to it so he can't get in front of you. Dixon had 13 points and three steals against Georgetown already with two this afternoon. Now Drew Nicholas in the game running the point. For the Turks, inside, Martison, travels. 
Mike Martisic, young man who came off the bench the other day with five points. Maryland plays ten guys, and Martisic is a fella at seven feet tall who can get good position inside and continue to attack the Collins twins in there. On a 7-0 run in the last 2.15, the bench very important for Maryland. They've got 20 points from their bench 24 times this year. Mendez on the hop, the jump hook is short. Martisic with the board. Now Dixon. Inside, holds it, nice catch. Knocked out of bounds by Jacobson. 11.48 to go, first half of play. Maryland on top of Stanford, 17-12. Maryland with its largest lead up by five. And Jason Collins on the bench with two fouls, and that might be the Achilles heel, but not really the Achilles heel, maybe the right foot, the navicular bone, in fact, in the right foot of Curtis Borchardt. This is a young man, a very, very talented player. He's only played 37 career games at Stanford, but he's already number seven on their blocked shot list. Seven feet tall, out for the season with that broken foot. And Martisic turns it over. Dale Johnson picks it up, out of bounds. And the last touch by the Turks. Third turnover of the game for Maryland. And for Stanford, their last four possessions, three turnovers, no points. Let's see if they look to get Casey Jacobson on track. Jacobson with three points so far. Jacobson playing against taller guys. Miller at six feet eight defending him. Mouton at six six defending him earlier. And the quarterback knocks one down. Kale Johnson, a freshman from Mira Mesa. San Diego. 17-15. Maryland. And now Johnson trying to match up against Holden on the inside. A turnover. Jacobson into the front door to the bucket. And we are tied at 17. Gus, we just showed you that graphic about Stanford turnovers. Now Maryland with the turnover bug and the Cardinal right back in the game. Hold, hold it on the baseline. Backing his man down. The double clutch. Weak side rebound to Mendez. Cardinal want to run it. And a man for Maryland. Jacobson popping out. And McDonald will reset it. Now Dixon matched up against Jacobson. Cross court, Mendez. Lost it, got it back, but traveled. We've seen Maryland be effective at creating turnovers and then turning them into baskets on the other end. McDonald does a nice job. This is a very aggressive pass. And Casey Jacobson noted for his three-point shooting, but that's a little bit of stuff around the basket. He can finish in transition. Casey Jacobson, a first-team AP All-America, the first in the history of the school. Baxter, he has been on fire during the tournament. Now, he's done a great job getting himself positioned down on the inside. K.O. Johnson, 6'7", 245, just not big enough to prevent Lonnie Baxter from doing whatever Baxter wants to do down there. Baxter, they say he's blue-collar. McDonald answers. And Stanford takes a 2019 lead. Very interesting. Stanford hadn't really handled the Maryland inside game well, but Maryland hasn't handled the Stanford perimeter game very well. Miller on the wheel. Beautiful layup. Nicely done by Danny Miller. You get worried about Baxter, and so you don't go and give the kind of defensive help that you normally would provide to your teammates. And Danny Miller, ironically, was recruited by Stanford, but chose to stay on the East Coast. Now Jaron Collins. Weak side, McDonald down the lane, the runner. Five points for Michael McDonald. 22-21, Cardinal. Well, Baxter asking for it inside again. Holden can't hold on. Stanford is a team noted as being catch and shoot guys, but Michael McDonald, one of the guys who does a real nice job getting it to the basket, and again, Maryland a little afraid to come and help because they don't want to leave Jaron Collins alone on the inside. So minute by minute, Michael McDonald starting to lead this Stanford basketball team. 
Now Collins inside. Beautiful shot. 24 21, Stanford. And the other way, here comes McDonald. Now Jacobson drives, fires, and air ball. Terrence Morris back into the game, his second. Blake. And a whistle and foul. Now, Sunday on 60 Minutes, a quarter of a billion dollars over 10 years. Alex Rodriguez has the biggest contract in the history of sports. Is he worth it? Find out Sunday on 60 Minutes. And Maryland, the first three rounds, 6 of 29 from downtown today, 3 of 5. Baxter to the bucket, reverse layup, count it. Baxter with eight points in the first half. At some point in this tournament, teams are going to get the idea that they really are to guard that guy. Very difficult. As I mentioned, they call Baxter a blue-collar worker. His father works for DC Metro. Lonnie Baxter Sr., over 20 years for the basket guards. No, Baxter cleaning it up inside. Cross court, Nicholas. Now Blake dumps it down and turns it over. Michael McDonald the other way. Mendez. And a whistle. Foul coming up against the Terps. Gus, it's very interesting. Stanford has really done a nice job when they've been able to get in their half-court offense. 7.38 to go in the first half of play. Stanford and Maryland duking it out. Back in Anaheim, Stanford leads Maryland 24-23. Back in February, Maryland was floundering. In fact, the Terrapins had lost four of five, and Gary Williams was searching for answers. So what he did, he got Baltimore Ravens head coach Brian Billick to speak to his team prior to a game on the 20th of February with NC State. It worked because then they went on to win nine out of eight. I wonder what he said to them. He was supposed to be here today, guys, but believe it or not, he got caught in traffic on the freeways here in Southern California. Winning nine out of ten games, Coach Billick and the Super Bowl champion Ravens. A big help to Gary Williams. Justin, very interesting. That man right there, Gary Williams, Brian Billick is only the second person that Gary Williams has ever had speak to his team before a game. The other one was, was when he was at Ohio State. And the guy that spoke to his team was an Ohio State graduate, a fellow by the name of Jack Nicholas. Inside, Luton off the heel. Jacobson with the rebound, his third. Stanford trying to advance to the Final Four for the third time in the school's history. 1942, they were the champs, and they advanced in 98. Mendez down the lane, rejected by Baxter. And Maryland thus far doing a nice job making Mendez put the ball on the deck and go to the basket. You don't want to let Mendez catch it and shoot it. Now Baxter on the low post, runs right over a Cardinal, gets his own rebound, and a whistle inside. With the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed over $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. And the second foul has been called on Mouton. Stanford really doing a nice job on the boards. Maryland having a difficult time getting second shots. And when they get them, Maryland falling away. Mike Montgomery's troops did a nice job contesting after Maryland gets an offensive rebound. Maryland over the limit, one and one for Mendez. And he is one of the best free throw shooters in the country, has in only, any league. <laughs> has only missed five all season long, so he's now 93 of 98. So he's close to that Rod Foster of UCLA, that big, or that Pac-10 record of 95 out of 100 in a year. Hit 49 in a row at one time. The school record was 41 by Todd Mitke. And he misses the second. Inside, Dixon throws it out of bounds. Dixon a little out of control. Gus, I tell you what, Juan Dixon threw the ball 
to a spot where Terrence Morris should have been. Terrence Morris made the mistake a lot of guys do. Dixon penetrates to the basket, and Morris stood and watched. What you've got to do is you've got to follow that ball to an open spot, and Morris didn't do it. Brings in Tony Joe Bikini, a junior from Salt Lake City, and the Cardinal turn it over. Here's Miller in transition, down the lane, stolen away. Maryland is simply not executing in its transition game. Stanford's executing well in the half court, but Maryland making some mistakes in transition. And both teams making mistakes right now. Nine turnovers and eight turnovers. Here's Morris from 20. It's good. Terrence Morris. It's a two-point field goal. Put on the line. He has six. Make it five. And don't forget, coming up next, Duke versus Southern California in the East. Obviously, if you're Maryland, you'd like to have that three-point basket, but his foot was on the line. But for Maryland, that's a positive sign that he's shooting it from out there. How big of a game is this for Gary Williams and the Terps? They have never been to the Final Four. This is his first Final Eight appearance. And so many great players coming through that College Park gymnasium door inside Collins. Short, loose ball, Jacobson fights for it, and they'll jump it up. The possession arrow in the favor of the Cardinal. When you think about all the players at Maryland, Len Bias and Len Elmore and John Lucas. John Lucas, Walt Williams, none of them ever advancing to the big stage. Jacobson off the dribble. The kick, Julius Barnes rises. It's short. Morris with the rebound. His third. Blake inside. Baxter lowers his shoulder, and he will run over you. Baxter just does a great job, Gus, running to the block. And that time, Steve Blake showed some good patience, not making the tough pass. Waited till Baxter got in great position and put the ball right on the money. 27-25, Terrapin. McDonald rejected by Morris. McDonald gets it back and a reach and foul against the Turks. Just because you're a big guy doesn't mean you walk down the court. Now, this is a good play not to throw the lob to Baxter, to wait till he gets right in position. Collins doing the flop. And I'll tell you what, if you're going to drop inside against Baxter, he's going to score every time. Lonnie Baxter from Silver Spring, Maryland, went to Springbrook High School. He said that he patterns his game after Charles Barkley. No nonsense on the floor. And McDonald misses the first. Michael McDonald, the senior from Long Beach. His father, Glenn, was an All-America at Long Beach in a first-round pick in professional ball. McDonald gets the second. 27-26. And then for Stanford. Back to once again. Guarded by Collins. Drop step and takes it home. The young man is going to work then. Gus, if he's going to dribble the basketball, that time Julius Barnes tried to get down there and get it, but you've got to be there and take the ball from him when he dribbles it. He gets that one power dribble, and unless you steal it, it's going in the goal. Baxter with 12. Dale Johnson squares. Way off the mark. Knocked out of bounds, last touch by the Cardinal. And the Maryland fans are into this one here in Anaheim. So Blake, Morris, Baxter, Miller, and Dixon on the court for the Terps. And a look at the shooting, Maryland burning it up. Keep in mind that Jason Collins on the bench for Stanford with those two personal fouls. Blake, count it. Gus, they've now got four three-point baskets through the Terrapins, and they only had a six total in the first three games of this tournament. 32 to 26. Maryland. Largest lead of the game. Barnes in the corner. Trying to answer loose ball. And Maryland is after every loose ball to start. Dixon. Inside Morris.
Maryland has the game going at a tempo they really like. Dirk's on a 7-0 run. Inside, knocked off with the knee of Collins. A great hustle by Collins trying to get out after that. Now McDonald, the runner. Loose ball and a foul coming up on Blake. Jaron Collins snatching down the offensive rebound. We talked about Maryland wanting to play the up-tempo style, and Juan Dixon makes a great decision, faking out one defender, drawing the other one, and finding Terrence Morris very effectively on the inside. Sub comes into the game. Blake picked up his second. Mendez back on the floor. Blake takes a seat. And that may be as big for Maryland as Jason Collins being on the bench with two fouls is for Stanford. Blake, a really key to running that team. Jaron Collins gets the first one to go against Cincinnati. Stanford, 20 of 29 from the line. They're a 74% free throw shooting team on the season. And the big guys shoot it extremely well. Second one good. Collins four for four. The entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. And a look at the game summary. Maryland shooting 60%, 15 of 25. However, Stanford only down 34 to 28. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. Tell me what you think so far. Gus, I think for the most part, Maryland has got the tempo of this game just about where they want it. A lot of turnovers by Stanford. They only average 13 a game on the season, and they've already got eight. Now Baxter, a blocking foul on the baseline against Teo Johnson, and they don't have any answers for Lonnie Baxter right now. They have to force Lonnie Baxter to give up that basketball before he gets in a position to make a move to the basket. Got to bring somebody down from the top to try to dig it out of there, make him pass the ball outside. Into the backcourt, Morris. Morris has seven points after going one of 11 against Georgetown, having four points. Yes, Baxter's got 12, Morris has seven, so they've got 19 points from the big guy. Morris on the bank, short, Mendez clears the rebound. I think every time Maryland sets up in the half-court offense, Gus, Lonnie Baxter ought to touch the ball. The last 12 possessions, four turnovers, no points for the Cardinals. So now Stanford, the pace a little bit slower. Knocked away, out of bounds. We'll head the other way. Stanford having a hard time getting in their offense right now. And a look at the tournament summary. All four number one seeds are still alive. And the Pac-10, three teams in the Elite Eight. How about that? Henry Bibby, what a fine job he's done at SC. And that ought to be a great game. Duke against USC. Nicholas pulling up. And Teo Johnson with the rebound. His first. McDonald the other way. Collins. Mendez, Johnson, County. Johnson doing a nice job. He's now got five points off the bench. They went right inside on the attack. Four-point Maryland lead. And a man for Stanford. And again, we're in the half-court set. Honey Baxter really ought to be touching the ball. Not out there, though. Now Dixon on the fade, an air ball. That's good defense by Jacobson. And a steal, Dixon, lead pass, Nicholas. He's got a trailer with him, up and in and one. The feline quickness of Juan Dixon stepping into the passing lane. Forcing the turnover and now potentially a three-point play. Gus, you better zip that ball from one station to another if you're playing offense against Maryland. This is just a very soft pass to Mendez. You can't lob it in there. And Maryland, once they get the ball, they're interested in getting out and going. Teo Johnson and Mike Montgomery thought that was a walk, but the official disagreed. And Drew Nicholas as the free throw, the sophomore from Long Island. Full court pressure by the Turks. 
Collins trying to get it in fouls. Jacobson almost steps on the sideline. Knocked away into the hands of Dixon. Down low, Nicholas. And the Turks catching the Cardinal off guard. Maryland makes them pay every time they turn it over. Maryland doing an absolutely fantastic job thus far, turning that defense right into easy offense. Turks with their largest lead up by nine. And a push inside against Baxter. Now don't forget, coming up at the half, the singular at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg in the studio with tournament news. And they will take a closer look at Arizona's Lute Olsen. Mike Montgomery on the sideline as Jason Collins heads to the free throw line. And Jason Collins, of course, with those two personal fouls. Mike Montgomery, no choice, really, but to put Collins back in the game to give Jaron Collins a little rest. Now Jaron Collins can get up and re-enter as well. But with 56.2 to go, you want to get him out of the game if you can. And Collins misses the first. And to allow Mike Montgomery to get him out of the game as Martisich comes in for Baxter, Jason Collins is going to have to make this second free throw. And he missed them both. And now he's got to be careful. Jason Collins, that is. Don't want to pick up your third foul with less than a minute remaining in the half. Let's see if Maryland goes right at him. Dixon down the lane. Blocked by Collins, loose ball, scramble, picked up by Jacobson in a push. Chris Wilcox pushing Casey Jacobson. <laughs> you tell me these guys aren't interested in going to the final four. This ball, everybody down on it, and Wilcox just stumbles into Jacobson, and whether it's intentional or not, it's contact and it's a foul. So they will make the walk to the other end of the floor, and Jacobson will shoot two. Stanford in the double bonus. And that's a real break for Stanford. Maryland had the opportunity to maybe get two possessions before the end of the half and stretch out that lead. Tonight on CBS, Craig T. Nelson stars as a police chief who's on a mission to stop crime in Washington, D.C. See why the district is Saturday's number one show tonight on CBS. Both free throws good. And Jason Collins takes his seat. 37 seconds to go. 39-32 Maryland. This really looks like it's open here, doesn't it? The Maryland guys are in this area here, but watch how quickly Maryland closes to the ball. The deflection by Wilcox. Maryland gets the ball, and then they are able to attack the basket. They've really done a nice job converting the turnovers. And Stanford, the Cardinal, have turned it over 11 times, resulting in 14 Maryland points off turnovers. And that is a huge number here in the first half of play. Stanford, not a team that turned the ball over an awful lot. Well, they only averaged 13 turnovers per game on the season. Now Maryland trying to spread it out. About two seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Look for Dixon to get it. Weak side, Holden squares up. And hits. Taj Holden, two threes in the first half. McDonald from midcourt. It's short, and Maryland, they can't play any better, folks. The Turks head into the locker room with their largest lead, 42 to 32. What a nice job by Drew Nicholas. Now, this isn't really that good a pass, but Taj Holden catches it ready to shoot, and boy, that's what you have to do. And here's Dwayne Ballin with Gary Williams. Coach Williams, a very aggressive first half. Are you pleased with the first 20? Well, I really liked our effort. I thought we battled when we had to with the big people, and we did a pretty good job defending on the three-point line, and that's hard to do because they can score both ways, but... I, I was really impressed with our composure that half, and hopefully we can do that the next 20 minutes. What adjustments would you like to make in the second half? Well, we got to get to the foul line. We only shot one free throw, so we got to be more aggressive going to the basket. Thanks. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. 
one half standing in the way of the Terps and the Final Four. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Salomon Smith Barney. Nextel. Holiday Inn. And by United Airlines. 